Hey, welcome to Unknowns. Today we will be seeing about how to identify a fungi based on its DNA sequences derived from ITS region. Remember, it is not ITS gene, it is ITS region because it is a compilation of um, you know, five more genes in them. So it is around uh, 650 base, but we, are, we have to use ITS1 and uh, ITS4 primer for uh, amplifying ITS. So to, in order to identify any fungi, that to, to species level, we need to um, go for ITSG. Before that, we need to have all the traditional taxonomic data. So here I have a sequence of a strain uh, KGC35 that has been derived from a, uh, it's an epiphyte of Catharanthus roseus. Uh, we have done the imprint plating of the leaves on the surface of uh, PDA and uh, here is the result. So after incubation, I can see most of the fungi, you know, multiple species of fungi in culture. This orange one, the bright orange, we are going to subculture and we are going to find which fungal species it is. So as a first step, we have prepared PDA, you know, uh, this is front plate picture and this is reverse plate picture. So we have prepared a fresh PDA by point inoculation, we have inoculated the fungi. As you know, every day you need to keep track of the growth, what is the, you have to measure the radius of the growth in order to find the rate of the growth of the fungi. Here we have third day plate and here it is, the plate that has been subjected to lactophenol cotton blue stain. Typically, a typical of an endophyte, though it is an epiphyte here, you know, we cannot find a fruiting structure. The conidia four structure, we couldn't find. Uh, so, what we have done, uh, as much as possible, we have taken the taxonomical data. The typical character of this fungi is producing uh, orange uh, pigmentation in the reverse plate, which is not that, we cannot call them as a diffusible pigment, because wherever the fungal biomass is, pigment is restricted to that uh, area. So uh, I am not going to show all the data we have derived. We have also derived the secondary metabolic data and the other uh, uh, data are very much important for taxonomy. So this is a very preliminary data I am showing. So what we have done, we have isolated DNA. We have amplified uh, ITS 1 and 4. Using ITS 1 and 4 primer, we have amplified the uh, region. We send it for sequencing. All right. So when the sequences come, Usually, uh, the companies, we usually ask the companies to, you know, excite both forward and reverse, compile it, trim out the primer, and give only the uh, actual sequence. So, typically, uh, you will receive a sequence in FOSTA format. So, here is the sequence. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to subject the sequence to BLAST analysis. Selecting the entire sequence length. Copy the sequence. Okay. And uh, after copying, I'm going to subject the sequence to BLAST analysis. So how to do BLAST analysis? So here, go to, I'll uh, show it from the scratch. Go to Google, here type NCBI. Uh, you can also type NCBI BLAST, just so that it will, the first page, select the page. Since it is a nucleotide sequence, we are selecting nucleotide blast. Okay. In this box that is being here, we are going to paste our sequence. So whatever sequences we have copied, we have pasted here. After pasting it, just come down the page, or scroll down. I usually go for uh, standard databases. You may argue why not just like ITS databases because we have ITS sequences. If you click like this databases, you know, that is either ATS, 28S, or ITS. This region, what we have sequenced, has both 28S, ITS1, 5.8S, ITS2, and 18S RNA. So, since we have five combinations here, they are individual combinations. The query coverage will not be at all, will not be 100%. So, I usually go with the standard database, we exclude the unculturable, we don't want to see them. So, usually I select the uh, show results in new window. Click blast. What happened? A new window has been created. So basically, what's happening here is US sequences is being compared with the database sequences, and um, whichever the closest to match that sequence is formed, it will be displayed. As you can see here at the bottom, page will be automatically updated in seven seconds. This 
uh, will be keep on running uh, after seven every seven seconds the page will be updated okay here you have a request id what is the time we made the request what is the right time uh, how much seconds has passed since our submission okay usually this uh, depends on the traffic in the server and also depends on the internet connection uh, let's see so we have 17 more seconds to see the results so like i said what blast usually do is uh, they take our sequence which is a query sequence and they are comparing the sequences with the database sequences so how this blast works is they created a database with uh, already known species the sequences from the known species and they created a database so even in non taxonomist they sequence the dna dna that sequence can be compared with the sequences of the known species that is already been deposited in the database and uh, the results will be displayed so basically the blast works like this so there is another concept called cutoff for itsg it is generally believed that the cutoff range is at least 3% what it means is whichever match our sequence is going to find should be more than 97% in order to call the you know reference sequence as a um, as a result okay so here is the result the result has been displayed if you can see in the topmost page so citation for blast if you are writing a you know manuscript in this and um, right so our sequence is uh, 601 base pair it's of dna type so here is the result the result are displayed okay so you can see the first result okay corallomycetella repens usually your sequence is corallomycetella you can also see many 100% core coverage and same similarity values are there here is when you can uh, bring the phylogenetic tree and the other analysis to come from that uh, it is corolla corolla mycetella repens okay uh, if i click this you can also see the alignment pattern so out of 601 base pair okay um, 595 base pair has found the exact match with the subject sequence here the subject is a sequence present already in the database query is our sequence wherever you don't find a match you will not have an alignment uh, bar so we here we have c here we have c p all right so likewise uh, the other uh, sequences will also flow so i guess uh, this corolla mycetella reference is only one sequence available in the subject database i think one or two should be available that's why you know uh, only one sheet has been found. Okay. Shall we confirm how many sequences are available? So go to NCBI. Here, uh, select data nucleotide. So here, paste the sequence to see how many sequences is already IPS available in the gen bank. If we have more than 100 corolla mycetella points, all should be displayed in the result. Here it is. We have only five sequences out of which three is, I think only two is Corolla. That's why all, not all sequence, you know, it is being displayed in the blast. So with the phylogenetic tree as an additional analysis, you can confirm, but I'm uh, pretty much convinced that uh, it is Corolla mycetella okay. You can also uh, um, compare your uh, other data with uh, whatever data that has been available. So that's how we use ITS uh, gene sequences to identify the fungal species. Keep watching unknowns.